A good afternoon. I'm going to be going through the Tempest and looking at a particular question. The Tempest is written by William Shakespeare. And it's an interesting play in the sense that we could relate to it as people are survivors from a shipwreck. But then it goes into the, the abnormal, the supernatural, and visitations thereof. And what would Shakespeare presents the, 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 the play in terms of what would we as shipwrecked passengers do in such a situation? So um, if I just share a screen of one of the um, scenes. And he has a, he has a, a shipwreck, okay? The stranded passengers on the island, but the supernatural um, uh, occurrences. There is a resident on the island whom we'll see a bit later. But what would you do if you were shipwrecked? That's basically what Shakespeare is trying to, th to get you to think about. So the, um, the plot is, starts off with a raging storm, a raging storm, and there's a ship going along and it gets shipwrecked on some rocks and begins to sink. The ship is carrying an important person called Alonzo, the king of Naples, and is caught on their voyage home from the wedding of Alonzo's daughter in Tunisia. So they, they sort of have some important people like Prospero, the former Duke of Milan, is also on board, and his daughter Miranda. And these, these two individuals um, worry about the ship's passengers, and they suspect that the storm will result in most of their deaths. Antonio is another character, and he was betrayed and overthrown with the help of Alonso. And Prospero and Miranda end up getting involved with this Antonio on the island, and they, they react in terms of the storm. Um, one of the spirits is Ariel, Ariel the spirit, and he, or she, if you like, is, is someone who creates lots of charms and enchants the people on the island. And Ariel is, relates to someone of servitude and he um, angers Prospero in a way in that the spirit saved him from the witch Sycorax. But the spirit is taking favor with other inhabitants of the island. Caliban is one resident inhabitant of the island who, fa who fancies Miranda and he causes some problems on the island. Um, he is recounting how Prospero treated him in a way, he stripped him of his, his rulership, if you like, and made him a subjugated to on the island as if he's a as if he's a shipwrecked person if you like um so part of the there are a lot more characters including stefano and trinculo etc so part of the question we're going to look at today is a, a relationship between a man and a woman and as in the past paper question there is a section in Act 3, which relates to this. So, if we get up the question now, okay, um, so I'll just uh, get up the next screen for you. Okay, um, should be loading any minute. There we go. And in this extract, um, we, we see some exclamations or talk from Miranda, Ferdinand, mainly, and their relationship. Okay, so in this extract, Ferdinand has been put to work by Prospero and Miranda has come to help him. Now the question relates to, we move down a bit, um, starting with this conversation, explore 
how Shakespeare presents the romantic relationship of Miranda and Ferdinand in the extract, and then writes about their romantic relationship in the whole play per se. So let's, without further ado, go back to the, the extract and begin reading it. As I'm reading it, I'm going to give a few pointers as to the analysis. So Miranda, I do not know. One of my sex, no woman's face remember, save from my glass, mine own. So she's kind of like shy of her reflection in a mirror, if you like, or in the glass. And she's asking the reflection not to reveal her true face. Nor have I seen, okay, nor, again, a negative connotation, more than I can, that I may call men the new good friend. And my dear father, how features are abroad. I am skillless, but of but by my modesty, the jewel of my dower. I would not wish any companion in the world but you, nor can a man imagination form a shape besides yourself to like of, but I prattle something too wildly, and my father's precepts I therein do forget. So she's kind of like talking a lot, testing um, uh, Prospera, see if, remember the question is about Miranda and, and Ferdinand, but testing if Prospera understands what she's saying. And as a springboard, she will then pass these ideas, if you like, of her looks, her skills, her presentation, etc., to Ferdinand. She claims that she is skillless in line six. I am skillless, but of but by my modesty. So the oxymoron is that she's skillless, skillless, but then she says, however, I am modest as a person. So therefore I'm valuable as a jewel. So that's a good example of symbolism. And hopefully Ferdinand will pick up on that. Ferdinand then says, I am in my condition. A prince, Miranda. I do think a king. So he's trying to put across his wealth, his, his success, if you like, to her. Trying to impress her. I would not so and would not more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer. Okay, so his continence, if you like, is he would rather not continue as a prince or king. If he loses Miranda, he'd rather be with Miranda, if you like. So he thinks that's more important than wealth. The flesh fly. I've noticed the two Fs, alliteration. The flesh fly blow my mouth. Hear my soul speak. And the alliteration again, soul speak at the end. But there's also sibilance in terms of the suffer and speak. The very instance that I saw you did, my heart fly into your service. So he has instantly fallen in love with Miranda. And he's trying to tell her that through his um, rather interesting, yet perhaps unusual examples like fly. Fly repeated again. Okay, flesh fly is not a very nice insect. It, it lives off the, the dead corpse or dead carcass, if you like, and lays its eggs on there. So that's a bit of an unusual um, example, but he said, I'd rather be dead than be without you, in other words. So let's continue, line 20, to make me slave to it, and for your sake, am I this patient log man? So he's very, very willing to wait for her, and he hopes that Miranda will be his. And Miranda then asks the key question. Do you love me? <clears throat> now, what do you think Ferdinand's going to say? Well, that's one of the most important questions in a relationship and very relevant. Ferdinand replies, Oh, heaven, repeats, Oh, earth, bear witness to the sound. Now, by saying so, he's emphasizing the extreme importance of what he's going to say. He's, he's saying that what I'm going to tell you is before on my crown and therefore it's the truth 
So, and crown what I profess with kind event, if I speak true, if hollowly in invert. So in other words, he's certainly emphasizing he's going to speak the truth, but if he doesn't, then he should eat his words. Hollowly invert, don't trust me, in other words. So there's the there's a contrast again, oxymoron, if you like, a contrast. What best is boded me? <clears throat> B and B alliteration separated by is to mischief I beyond all limit of what else is thy to thy world do love prize honor you so he absolutely assures Miranda that he 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 loves her with all of his being all of his creation if you like as he exists on earth and oh heaven he sort of relates to God and he says that I am telling you that I do love you and prize you and honor you. Miranda replies, I am a fool to weep at what I'm glad of. She's so overjoyed to hear that Ferdinand loves her dearly, more than just loves her, loves her to the depth of his soul and his being, that she begins to cry. And hmm, crying, sad, or crying so happy? Is she really a fool? Perhaps not. Perhaps she's very lucky and very grateful that Ferdinand loves her dearly. So these are some of the things you should write down. Apart from your analysis, give your own opinions. And that's the first part of the question. And then the relationship of Mar Miranda and Ferdinand in the, whole, in the whole play, if you like, is another important part to consider. So um, if we go to that, um, some of the indicative content that the examiners are looking for <clears throat> is the love, the genuine love between the two characters in the whole play, but also the innocence as it's their first love and the first time they've fallen in love and the intimacy of their attraction means they are quite uh, pure, innocent, if you like, and inexperienced, but they can certainly appreciate each other's qualities. Miranda is rather naive, naivety and honest. She's very honest, especially in the way she is forthright in a question to Ferdinand, do you love me? So you, you need to explore the depth of that as that probably is one of the most important things of a relationship to make sure that the love is genuine. And that um, if they, they do get married, um, how would they react to Prospera? Would he approve and would he approve of their marriage and their presentation as husband and wife? Their physical attraction is no doubt absolutely convincing. Visually, in terms of the mirror, Jewel, Miranda, very beautiful. And Ferdinand talks of her very beautiful features. Ferdinand's hyperbolic, lang hyperbolic language also is important in that he expresses his genuine love for her in, in a lot of depth, in a lot of soul searching, as well as making a vow to heaven and earth. So we can therefore, as the audience, be convinced in his genuinity towards his affection towards Miranda. The contrast between Ferdinand and Miranda's language is also quite important. Miranda is rather straightforward to the point, perhaps a doubt in herself a little bit, Whereas Ferdinand is more in depth and there's a lot of symbolism, imagery, etc. A lot of the motive language in Ferdinand's replies to Miranda. And the, their language then indicates a, a freedom from the bonds of slavery, from the bonds of court and wealth and domination. And they then become embraced in each other's arms and they fall in love. And that, that to them is more important than anything else. Their innocence could be corrupted, but they, with the help of their parents and the blessing of their marriage, they would avoid corruption. But the themes throughout the play involve some corruption and a problem with Caliban, who's jealous of Miranda, wants Miranda, and causes a problem in terms of his threat towards Miranda. Um, 
But Ferdinand realizes that in, he, in the long term, to make the success of their relationship work, he's going to have to submit to Prospero's commands and obey the, his commands for the sake of his one and true love, Miranda. So it's a very romantic uh, play, if you like, and also romance comes from tragedy of the shipwreck. And I hope that helps, and all the best in your reading of The Tempest. Um, just take care, and all the best. I wish you well. Um, bye.